Good evening and good morning. Good evening. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Kristen. So, thank you so much for uh, making us all available this late at night. Right. So, it's at 9 o'clock, uh, past 9 o'clock p.m. over in Dar es Salaam. Yes. But the ambassador is based now. Yes. So, it's a, it's a great honor for us to have you speak to us directly. It would even be better to have you speak in person. Yeah, next time. But, uh, this is as, <laughs> as good as it gets, and I'm uh, very happy that it seems a video conference is working out on the technical front. Right. So I will just make a quick introduction, maybe, um, sure. to introduce the students to you, and then uh, we, we can pretty much get going. Right. So this is uh, Ambassador Omveni Sipur. I had the pleasure of meeting him a year and a half ago, yeah, uh, fall of 2013, uh, in Oxford, where he attended um, a training, an executive training session organized by the Oxford uh, School of Public School of Government and the Natural Resource Chapter, where. And affiliated with. And uh, it was a training offered to uh, uh, top level government officials from natural resource rich countries. So, Oveni Sefue uh, was there uh, attending that uh, session and uh, he struck me as with his sincerity when it came to the topic and at the same time being, you know, having this incredible aura of optimism, optimism and energy around him. So, he was. Uh, he was totally defeating, you know, statistics that uh, was quoting back then about Tanzania's uh, happiness, ranking on the global happiness indicator. Do you remember? Yes, sir. And Tanzania ranks, so this is a statistic done by the UN about global happiness. So nowadays we want to measure everything, including happiness. And so Tanzania ranks about uh, second to last, or third to last, so very close to the bottom. And uh, uh, both the ambassador. Uh, and, and who was your colleague again? Who was attending? Mr. Maswi. Yes, Mr. Maswi. Yeah. So both of them, you know, what the total opposite of that statistics. So it's always hard, you know, when you have an abstract number and then you have real world examples who are totally um, contradicting that statistic. So, and uh, the reason why I invited you to, ask to, to speak to us today is because, uh, as you know, from preparing this class and just from reading the newspapers, uh, East Africa and uh, Tanzania in particular have booked uh, some significant natural gas mines offshore, uh, which are now putting uh, this region on the map when it comes to serious energy export potentials from it being totally dependent on, on uh, oil and gas imports and now testing to become important exporters. Uh, but of course, the important challenge is ahead, and uh, uh, the ambassador is uh, a key player in setting out the framework for uh, Tanzania's uh, route to develop these uh, natural gas mines. Uh, his current position is uh, in his current position, he's the chief secretary of the government of Tanzania. Uh, before that, he had a distinguished career in the foreign service, uh, where he served as the ambassador to most recently to the UN, before that to the US and Canada. Did you ever make it out here, ambassador to Stanford? Oh yes, I've been there twice. Twice even? Yeah, so, to Stanford University. Very good. Yeah. So, so this is a homecoming for you. Thank you. Sort of. And, uh, and before that, he was uh, posted as an ambassador to Canada and Cuba. Um, Oh, that was a combined uh, 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 position. So uh, he has all, he, you also received this uh, this uh, award from the president, one of the highest awards. What what is it called again? It's um, got it back two years ago. Yeah. I read it in the newspaper. Two two years ago, slightly yes. over two years ago. Yes. yes. So so very good. So um, I think I'm not going through your uh, distinguished uh, CV much more because otherwise we would spend all, all day just talking about your accomplishments. I think we just are very eager to get going. Um, uh, I sent you an email, I, in, uh, email that I'd be asking my students mm -hmm. to come up with a preliminary uh, opinion about Tanzania's future mm -hmm. and how well it would be doing uh, when it comes to managing its natural resources. And, Avoiding the resource costs. Mm -hmm. So I think just as an icebreaker, maybe mm -hmm. we'll start here with doing the poll. I don't know the results either. Mm -hmm. So we'll see um, how many, maybe we we'll, we'll just raise our hands. So 
who thinks Tanzania is uh, more likely to be crossed by its natural gas pipes than less? And then I ask the opposite. So who's more pessimistic? Okay, it's, there's no right or wrong, okay? Or we, we know in a couple years. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven pessimists around the table. So how many optimists? Who thinks that uh, it would be a blessing for Tanzania to have this natural gas? Right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so eight. So slight majority. Uh, any body without an opinion sitting on the fence? No? So that. Well, I, I was going to raise my hand for both. For both? <laughs> okay. So, good. So, here's the thing. Here's the point right there. Um, so, so we, we, we can, you know, use that and come back uh, in, in our conversation about, you know, why do we think one way or the other, what are indicators and, and what sort of evidence can we cite in support of our our um, estimation. But I think at this point I just want to hand over to you, Ambassador. And as I mentioned, we have a very energized group of students here who will uh, be very eager to ask all sorts of questions, appropriate and not so appropriate questions. So it will be up to you to be the referee on which ones you want to take. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christine, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to your wonderful class. Uh, of 50 50 optimists and pessimists about. The future of Tanzania is a gas economy. And uh, I think that's a good place to begin. Uh, one of the things the president told me when I took up this position was uh, that we, are, we have just discovered a significant amount of natural gas. And we are in a way fortunate that we have discovered it uh, when there is enough experience across the world of those who did well and prospered and those who didn't do so well and ended up, as you said, with their resource gas. So what he asked me is try to learn as much as possible from my uh, international experience, from what has emerged as uh, if you like, uh, the global best practices on how to get it right. And that's how I came to meet uh, Christine at Oxford. It was part of my learning camp. Uh, so we want to get it right. And there are a number of things we have to look into besides just learning from uh, global best practices. And the first is exactly what do we want as a country? What, what kind of vision do we have? And I would say that we want to use natural gas to basically diversify the Tanzanian economy uh, because we are still a, a very poor country uh, with a per capita GDP of now something like 977 US dollars a year. So we want to build a capacity for sustainable growth. And we think we can do that by using um, the natural gas endowment to diversify our economy. And how do we do that? We want to make sure we get the maximum share of revenues uh, that would flow from the exploitation of natural gas. And here then the most critical issues would be a prudent contractual negotiations which means we have to build capacity to negotiate good contracts and the capacity even to know how much uh, natural gas we have and how much we're entitled to in terms of revenue flows. And secondly, we have to, ins to institute a clear strategy on how to domesticate the supply chain uh, for gas uh, to the extent possible through, uh, as I say, local capacity building. And thirdly, we have to avoid the negative macroeconomic consequences of exploiting natural resources, as you say, the Dutch disease, and make sure we don't forget the, the, the other sectors, such as agriculture and industry, and to make sure that our currency doesn't uh, value itself, uh, 
take a firm control on things like inflation. And fourthly, we have to ensure a prudent and equitable use of proceeds from natural gas uh, by setting up uh, rules for utilization, institutions for managing uh, investment proceeds, and creating a critical mass of informed citizens to enforce accountability and transparency. Now, these rules may include things like how much of the money should be invested, how much of it should be saved, the balance between uh, saving and investment, uh, where should the investments be made, which projects should have priority, and whether the returns from the savings should be invested or added to savings. You know, these are some of the issues we have to, uh, to decide upon as we go forward. And fifthly, we have to ensure that the future generations will also benefit from this uh, finite resource. Uh, so, do we have uh, sovereign wealth funds? And how do we manage it? How do we structure it? How do we make sure that uh, proceeds from the funds are invested uh, in, a, in a very prudent way? And then we have to look at the different stages. Uh, there are issues we have to address during the pre-production stage. Uh, these include, for instance, building local capacity uh, for, as I said, for contractual prudence and domesticating the supply chain. And here the key, uh, key areas include skills in revenue forecasting and contractual negotiation. It includes uh, technical skills for provision of related services. It includes um, skills in taxation and fiscal regimes in general. And by domestic supply chain, we, we, we mean uh, ensuring that the ability to provide as many of the services and products that are needed during the process of uh, gas mining, uh, from mining to export or delivery to local customers, is maximized among Tanzanian entrepreneurs. That means ensuring uh, local content. Then we have to establish rules for the allocation of, of proceeds and accountability uh, mechanisms to make sure that uh, we have a system that can enforce prudence and equitable benefits from gas revenue. And then we have to make some decisions regarding upstream how much gas should be used locally, for instance, for power generation, uh, for industries, and how much of it should be exported, especially taking into account that uh, the profitability of LNG plants depends to an extent on how much they can export. And the other decision we have to take here is uh, to determine what proportion of proceeds should be spent on domestic investment and as I said, how much of it should be put away, like in sovereign wealth funds. And we also have to look at the need to build up uh, capital within the country, especially when you have a capital poor country like, like Tanzania. Um, the debate is, do you put uh, assets in the country or do you uh, put your financial assets in New York? Uh, we have to decide uh, where to invest the proceeds domestically, for instance, is it energy, is it uh, petrochemical industries? And our, our initial thinking is that whatever we get should really be invested in line with the existing priorities. Instead of getting carried away that we are now very rich, we are Kuwait and we can invest in all kinds of things. And then downstream we have decisions we have to make, uh, things like um, how do we diversify the economy? How do we build in uh, absorptive capacity? Because that's also extremely important for a country like Tanzania, so that we can ensure high returns to the selected uh, projects uh, to be financed, including project design, evaluation, and implementation capacity. We have to institute measures to avoid the natural resource scarce, as I said, and the Dutch disease. And if we decide to create a sovereign wealth fund, really how to structure it and how to manage it. And finally, is the fiscal regime. And here again, we want to learn from the best global practices in terms of the taxation structure. 
which will balance the interests of the country vis-à-vis uh, -vis the interests of the, of the investors. So basically those are the things we are looking at. And uh, in the short term, we are, we are focusing on structural issues within the government. How do we make decisions? And we, are, we have decided that we are going to have an interagency um, authorizing environment. Uh, because, uh, you know, na uh, natural gas economy is more than the natural gas. It involves a lot of other sectors. Uh, so if you leave it in the hands of only the ministry responsible for that, uh, they may not see the big picture. So it's extremely important that you have an interagency coordination agency, which is the authorizing environment as to where we go and how we get there. Uh, the second thing that we have to deal with in the short term is a communication strategy, because there is the issue of managing expectations. Uh, when people hear that Tanzania now has uh, 51 uh, TCF of natural gas, they think that we are now a rich country and we can get all the things that we want. In reality, that's not the case. Um, we won't have a steady revenue stream, maybe for another 10, 12 years from today. Uh, so people have to realize that uh, it's, 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 not, it's not a lot of money and it's not now. And secondly, uh, we have to, 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 to uh, explain to the people that we also have a responsibility as custodian of this, uh, of this uh, finite resource, because we have responsibilities for future generations, and it's extremely important that we, we, we invest in things that will benefit future generations or we save for future generations and, and uh, we invest in things like human capital development, health, education, things that can outlive uh, the natural, natural resource. So, but to do that effectively, we must have a good communication strategy that will help to manage expectations among our own people, but also within the government itself and also with political leadership. Uh, and to, to make sure we insulate the sector from electoral cycles because it's easy for uh, when we go to an election for, for political parties to say you know if we get into power you are going to use uh, uh, revenues from the gas to do this and that and, and that's a sure way of, uh, of, of walking into a resource gas. So, so we have to, to work uh, on a communication strategy uh, not just for the people but also for the government and for political leadership. Uh, we have to strengthen institutions for transparency and accountability uh, because that's extremely important and we learn from global best practices that uh, accountability and transparency is a good way to make sure that we use the revenues uh, carefully uh, to, to make sure that we get the, the most we can from, from those resources. Then, of course, we have to strengthen, as I said, our capacity to negotiate because we are negotiating with uh, the biggest in the world uh, that they can afford the best legal, accounting, financial expertise that money can buy. Uh, and, and, and that puts our own negotiators at a bit of a disadvantage. And so we have to decide whether we should uh, perhaps uh, buy expertise from across the world, try to see if we can um, employ uh, the best law firms that we can find in the world so that we get uh, a team uh, that can match the capacity that's brought to the table by these uh, big uh, international oil companies. Uh, we have to look at our legislation, make sure that it covers all the important areas and perhaps try to legislate as much as possible so that we can remove the stuff that has to be negotiated at the negotiating table and also the capacity to monitor, uh, first of all, to establish how much the resource bases and how, uh, how we can ensure uh, that uh, the reports that come from the international oil companies are a true reflection of what is going on there. Uh, and of course, finally, there will be issues of monitoring for environmental uh,
issues as well as, as contract management. Then we have to look, as I said, at the fiscal regime, make sure we have a good fiscal regime uh, that remains attractive to investment, but make sure, make sure that we get uh, the maximum uh, returns for our people. And then, again, as I said, always bearing in mind the macroeconomic framework to make sure that we, we, we don't end up with the resource gaps. And finally, as a country, we have to have a national vision to make sure that we, have, we are clear across the country about what our strategic objectives are and, and, and the right balance and rebalance that we might need between domestic, regional markets and exports. Then in the medium term, we have to look at uh, how best to use the revenues that we are going to get. And our initial thinking is uh, what, what has been termed investing in investing, making sure that we build capacity along the entire natural resource value chain, um, making sure that we have a capacity for public investment, making sure that we make the right investment, uh, that we address issues like infrastructure, the obstacles to growth that we, we are facing right now, uh, the power sector is a big problem because we don't have enough power. Only about 36% uh, of our citizens are now connected to electricity. And uh, the industrial sector sometimes has to deal with unreliable power. So we want to deal with, uh, with the power shortage uh, uh, once and for all. But we also have to look at other aspects of infrastructure like our ports, our airports, our road infrastructure. And when we have a country the size of Tanzania, which is about 365,000 square miles, uh, it costs quite a bit of money to connect the entire country with reliable uh, infrastructure. So we think these are some of the things we are going to look at in terms of the best use of the resources that we are going to get. Uh, then we have to look at the skills set that we have, how we can build the skills, not only for people who could get jobs in, uh, in LNG plants or uh, with, with international oil companies, but also entrepreneurship and the skills of local entrepreneurs so that they can uh, get subcontracts from the uh, international oil companies. So we have to find a way of linking uh, the industry, what the industry needs, and what our education system produces. And in this, we have to work closely with the international oil and gas companies so that we are clear as to what kind of skills they are looking for, uh, let's say, over the next 10, 20 years, so that we have time to, to build those skills within, within the country. And as I said, we have also to... Uh, find a way of investing in the local areas where the gas is found. Because otherwise, if people think that uh, they sit on this resource, but then they don't benefit from it, then you are going to have a lot of political instability as well. So this is something we also have to look at, working with the international oil companies as well. And as I said, we have to build the institutional capacity within government uh, to make sure that we, we make the right decisions and also we can, we can manage the contracts that we are going to, to sign with the companies uh, well. And, and finally, it's environmental issues, uh, especially with offshore, because some of these uh, reservoirs are in areas that are ecologically sensitive, with marine life and, and coral life, and we have to have very strong uh, safeguards and also build a capacity for mitigation in case something goes wrong. So I thought I should say this as a, as a way of introduction because uh, as we agreed with Christine, uh, I think we should spend more time in a more interactive fashion and I would be keen to hear from you what you think from what you have had me talk about. Tell me if you think we are on the right path or if there are other things we have to look into so that eventually more of you would think that we are 
not likely to end up with the resource gas. So thank you very much and uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you. So I suggest that when you have a question, uh, you pose it to the Ambassador. Maybe you quickly introduce yourself, uh, name and uh, just your background, uh, one or two sentences.